Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you my second league game from 2022 against Mad Robin, and this time I'm playing Free People and she's playing Shadow, and we're using two action tokens because that's what we used last time. And before I get too far, I just want to remind everyone that the 2022 World Tournament is starting very soon, and so if you're watching this video soon after it came out, then you might still have time to register. The link I'll include in the description of the video, but it's tinyurl.com slash WOTR2022, and you can register. It's free to enter, and it should be a lot of fun. Currently, we have 108 players signed up, which is the record, and I feel so grateful to any everybody who has donated to the prize fund and just chosen to participate. Anybody who's just participating, it should be, it should be lots of fun. All right, so let's jump into the game. Uh, you can see that I, I'm playing free. My opponent allocated one eye and rolled two more, and I got a great starting roll. Anytime you have a playable card with Gandalf, plus this uh, file is a great card, obviously, and King, King Brandsman lets me draw two strategy cards, one from the card effect itself, plus the Palantir, so I'm always really happy to see that. And this Army Muster is also useful because it can help, it can help me get units into a Forest Road or Westham Net as I need in the early game. So this is a great roll, and then my opponent only got one muster, so they're not going to get Saruman turn one. So I'm, I'm really happy seeing this opening, and um, I'll start off by playing the strategy card. I like cycling my strategy cards usually a little more than my character cards in the early game because it just gives me more options for what to defend, and particularly I'm excited to find one of the three scouts that are in the deck. There, there are three scout cards in the strategy deck, and if I have at least one scout, then getting a unit into Old Forest Road will be particularly bothersome to Shadow, unless they happen to have Swarm of Bats early on. So um, I happen to draw scouts right there, so that's good. And when you draw enough strategy cards, your, your odds are decent of getting it. And um, plus the two extra regulars in Dela can be useful. All right, my opponent musters Isengard, because hopefully at some point they'll get Saruman. That makes sense. And then I go ahead and I think to myself, maybe maybe I should move here, but maybe it's okay to go a little slower if my opponent is also going slower. I I don't know. I don't know about this. I, I want to cycle more strategy cards. I guess I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll go military. I, I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking. I guess I had decided I was only going to move once against three eyes, but I, I think this might be a mistake because... If you can get two movements in on the first turn, then your third total movement will be at the beginning of turn two when Shadow is only hitting you on sixes. And that's the role that really makes the biggest difference because that's the role on whether or not you'll get hit and whether or not you'll get revealed and whether or not you'll have to go into Moria or go the high pass route, which is a longer path. So. While it's nice to get to cycle more cards with Gandalf, I, I think this might be a mistake. All right, I do end up playing Guards of the Citadel, and I get another scout, so I have a lot of flexibility there. My opponent organizes some armies in Mordor, and then I go ahead and move, and they miss, and then I and then they move one army to Morinon, and then I get some armies going to Old Forest Road and to Westham Net. So with my scouts, I'm very happy to put units in Old Forest Road, I wonder about maybe, I don't know, maybe I should move this unit from Carrick. It seems like, you know, just if I'm trying to predict what my opponent's going to do, it seems like they're probably going to send this Moranon army up north because they didn't get a lot of musters, so they may be delayed on that, but if they get sort of army movements or character dice, they can still keep their armies moving north. So. Maybe it would have made more sense to keep three units in Dale and just move this one from Carrick over. I think because I had uh, a second scouts card, I was thinking maybe I'd have time to play Grimbjorn and get the the actually play it for the card effect and then get the elite and the uh, leader over to Old Forest Road. But uh, yeah, I I don't know. That that might be a minor inaccuracy there. Okay, and then my opponent gets their units moving north. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I get Bilbo Song, obviously a little early to get that, and then my opponent allocates one eye and rolls zero musters. So 
this is extremely fortunate for me and extremely unlucky for them. The chances of getting only one muster on 12 dice from Shadow is 5%, something like that. So this is a very unlikely situation and obviously hugely to my advantage. Um, now, you may notice I also just drew Book of Mazarbul. Now, if I was thinking to myself, this is a great time to go for a military victory or try try a military attack, you know, that's maybe why I was I was cycling into more strategy cards. And if you look, I can actually I can actually do it this round if I'm willing to use a um, use a ring. So for example, I can play, I can use the Will of the West to separate to separate Strider. Then I can use a ring to move companions. Here, I'm just gonna demonstrate it just so you can see. So I take Strider, I, I use my Will of the West. I'll undo in a second so we can get back to this. I use my Will of the West to separate Strider and let's say Gimli or Legolas, whoever. Let's let's bring Legolas. Alright, Gimli, just for this example. And I get to move, since I've moved the Fellowship once and Strider's uh, level is three, I get to move a total of four regions. So I go one, two, three, four. And now I'm in Old Ford. Then for my next action, I'm just gonna, I'll move this up here. For my next action, let's say I, uh, I'll use this Army Muster and a ring. So I'm using an Elven Ring here to move companions again. So I get Gimli to Old Forest Road. I get Strider down to Parth Celebrant. Then I, my, next, my next action, I use a Palantir die to play Book of Mazarbul, which lets me draw an extra card from Gandalf, move Strider to Minas Tirith, move Gimli to Erebor, activate the dwarves, put them straight to war, and then last action of the turn, use the Will of the West to crown Aragorn and Minas Tirith. So I saw this, I saw this during the game, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo it now. So I saw that whole sequence from, from all of those dice, and I decided not to do it. And, and I regret it. Um, making this video, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm gonna have to make this video and explain that I saw all of that and then just chose not to do it. Um, so my thinking is, I, the reason why I didn't do it in the game was because I thought that it, there's only one eye and therefore my chances of making progress with the fellowship is very good. And um, Shadow is going so slowly right now that I, I should just keep making progress with the Fellowship while they only have one eye. And I don't think that's completely wrong, but you know, the other thing I was thinking was if I put the dwarves to war right now, then the Witch King com can come out probably next round if they get enough musters. But quite honestly, that, you know, they might not roll three musters next round because to get through, to get the Witch King, you actually, even if the dwarves, even if I put the dwarves at war, they would still have to roll three musters. One to get Saruman, one to put the Sauron to war, and one to get the Witch King. So um, I just, I don't know what I was thinking. It was just a cowardly, cowardly play to not to not separate Strider now and get a fifth die. I was worried about the health of the Fellowship. I wanted to make progress, um, but I, I definitely regret this. Um, and you'll see what happens in the game. So um, my opponent, uh, we already did their roll and um, we talk about how crazy it is that they didn't get a muster and oh, oh my gosh. Okay, sorry about that. What I just said still applies. But on top of all that, I didn't have to even spend a ring. So, I, sorry, I hadn't uh, rolled my dice yet. So all of that still applies. I can play Book of Mazarbul with this army muster. I don't get to draw a card from Gandalf, but I don't have to spend an elven ring, which is huge. So I could have gotten Aragorn, turn two, not spending any rings, and while doing that, put the dwarves to war and basically defend all of Dew, which, if I think about it, this army's coming up north anyway. So... All right, 
anyway, I, uh, so I guess with, I had three movements and that's, that's what I was thinking. So I have three movements against only one eye. I should, I should probably just go for it. Um, my opponent draws a card, they play a card, that makes sense. And then, um, what do I do? I move, yeah, so this is weird. I, I move my regular to Dimrel Dale because I'm thinking that, um, first of all, I have two scouts. So it sort of baits a scout, um, baits an attack. And the um, Sauron is not at war. So clearly this army wants to come towards Lorien and the Dol Golder army wants to come towards Lorien, but I sort of block them out of that by moving this regular to Dimrodale. I'm not sure if it's exactly right. Um, and then I move this regular to North Athelion because I was thinking, you know, I actually want, I want this army to go north because I have scouts. Um, because then these armies from the north can, can retreat into... Um, into Woodland Realm and into Erebor. I, I think this might have been a little bit of overkill. Um, th this army was going to go north anyway, uh, especially because I had already played Guards of the Citadel. So it's just, yeah, I think this was a slight mistake. I could have gotten my army from Western Net into Helm's Deep at that moment. That could have been reasonable. Um, or consolidate Iron Hills into Erebor, any of those. Um, I think this little play into Dimrod Dale is funny because it just, it, it defends Lorien a little bit, and I, I think that's okay. All right, so my opponent plays Great Host, uh, or um, uh, many, many Kings, and that gives, gives them uh, nice uh, units for the South Rons and Easterlings, and um, now I'm sort of regretting, oh, I could have gotten, I could have gotten the Dwarves to War with these armies coming up, it's gonna be, you know, Airborne's probably gonna come under attack. Okay. But fine, I'm just gonna rush with the fellowship and that's how it goes. So my opponent misses on that on that um, roll and then um, I move again and this time they catch me and they reveal me and I decide to go through Goblin's Gate. And again, I don't know what I was thinking there. I mean, the fellowship was doing fine and it would have been okay to lose Gandalf here if I had drawn a big tile in Moria. Um, I guess I was thinking since Saruman isn't out now, then my opponent um, will be getting Saruman next round, and therefore I might not be able to get Gandalf unless I use a token, but I still think it probably is at this point faster, to, better to go through um, Moria, but it's a little unclear. Um, okay, so um, also, I ran the numbers afterwards, and against a single die, only a single eye, if you move twice at the beginning of the game, Shadow has, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, a 27% chance of catching, of revealing you at least once on, on only a single eye. Now, may, maybe I'm wrong. If somebody wants to double check that math, please do. Maybe it's a 27% chance of getting hit, but um, let's do it. Let's do so just some quick math. If we do, um, if we do five sixths, which is the chance to get missed, times four sixths, which is the chance to get missed again, that's going to be. So what's that math? Five times four is twenty. So twenty thirty sixths. That's your chance of getting missed. So 16 out of 36, you're gonna get hit, even just on one die. And then you figure about half of that is, even a little more than half is a reveal. So we're looking at about eight thirty-sixths, something like that, nine thirty-sixths. So um, yeah, that's about a quarter, right? Um, so, so a quarter of the time, if you move twice, you're gonna get revealed. So obviously this isn't like, it's not great for me that I got revealed here, but you know, it's nothing like the bad luck that my opponent had for not getting a muster, for not getting a second muster, right? Like that was a 5% chance for them to only roll one muster. This was a 25% chance for me to get revealed on one of my two movements. So, you know, I think the value of a single eye in the hunt box for shadow is, is pretty good. You, you do have some chances. It, it, it does a lot of work for you. Um, Okay, so I go ahead and hide, 
and um, my opponent gets their um, armies to right, you know, right up to do, which is sort of what I've encouraged them to do by moving this unit to North Athelion. But now, you know, I'm not feeling that great, actually. Like, this is a big army in East Maroon. This is a big army in Northern Rovanian. So, you know, how different would this be if I were going to roll five dice next turn and had a companion in Erebor and the dwarves were at war? And we ended like this. Very, very different feeling. So, the, obviously the Fellowship wouldn't be as far along. Okay, so that's how it went. I draw some cards. This is a tricky situation. I'm curious to know what you would discard here. Obviously, I'm happy to see Cairdan's ships. That's always a good way of defending Dol Amroth. Obviously, the elves aren't at war yet, but it seems like they're going to be at war from this army. From the um, so I think I ended up discarding Book of Mazarbal. Yeah, I, I sort of decided, hey, I'm not going that route. It's a little strange because you know maybe I could get someone there, but I just I'm just going to try and run with the fellowship. I think is my plan. So my opponent only rolls two musters. So even if the dwarves had gotten to war last round, they still wouldn't have gotten the witch king this round. Um, and that's just sort of the nature of this sort of not getting just the bad luck from the from the beginning. So um, I get two movement, that's standard. I move and they, they miss me. And um, then I didn't see exactly what they did. They, what happened with their die? Oh, they, they got Sauron to war. Right, you have to get Sauron to war to be able to attack. Um, there and then uh, I move a second time and they hit me for one. I lose Gandalf because um, I want to be able to use Strider's ability to hide and I'm not too worried about corruption at this point. My opponent attacks Dale and this was my whole plan, right? To force them up north to attack Dale um, and then play scouts, which I do, but they have Swarm of Bats and they get a hit. So obviously well played by my opponent to, you know, use the swarm of bats. That's, you know, what you should do if you're trying to defend against scouts. Um, you know, I had some options here where I could have had a different orientation of units. Instead of these two regulars in Old Forest Road, I could have had three regulars in Dale and one regular in Old Forest Road. Um, so the other thing, you know, the other thing that I think I, I messed up a little bit here is I could have potentially mustered the north once prior to this attack so that in this moment, if they did take Dale, I could move these other units into old, in from Old Forest Road sort of with an army muster. So maybe I could have done something about that. Um, I go ahead and get, I use an army muster to get units where they need to be, uh, Erebor and Helm's Deep. And then my opponent attacks Woodland Realm. And um, let's see what happened there. I hide, that makes sense. And then my opponent plays New Powers Rising. So they got, they got Saruman and then New Powers Rising, which is obviously a great card early on. I'm happy to have scouts still, and other scouts to retreat from Fords of Eyes into Helm's Deep. Um, and Mithrocote and Sting is obviously super strong. What would you discard here? Again, a little bit tricky. Obviously, I'm going to keep Cairden ships. I intend to keep scouts. Bilbo Song, Vile Galadriel, super strong. Mithrocote and Sing, Sting, super strong. So it's really for me between Power of Tom Bombadil and Elven Rope. You know, Elven Rope is good, um, but uh, it's. I think I, I'm. I want to make sure. The North can go to war, and it feels like, I guess North going to war doesn't matter that much, um, but it feels like these units um, from North and South Dunlin may come over to the Shire, and Power of Tom Bombadil can be a nice surprise. And also, um, Advantageous Position is a more useful combat effect than, um, than obviously, it is a gift. So, my opponent allocates one eye, and then gets some musters now, and I get one movement. So, obviously not great. I would love to get more movement. And you know how you have more movement? If you have more dice. So if you had gotten Aragorn on turn two, Ira, then you would have more dice. 
and that might have been better. Okay, um, so uh, my opponent gets Southrons and Easterlings toward war, now they're at war, and then they move some units around, they take uh, Iron Hills and uh, organize some units in North Dunland, and um, then what do I do? So I get, right, right, right. So I get the elves, I use my action token to get the elves one towards war so that if my opponent attacks um, Dimrel Dale, and let's say they have scout, um, Swarm of Bats or whatever, even if I can't use scouts, I can then muster into, into Lorien. So, um, I wanted to do that, why, right then? I think I just wanted the tempo advantage, but maybe I could have, maybe I could have waited one more, um, because, here's, right, here's the thing that happened. So because I did that and my opponent sees it, then they know they can merge armies in Holland, which is what they're about to do, and then move to Trollshaws, attack Rivendell, and then get the Witch King. And so, and, with, and by that by that path, um, I'm not mustering any extra units anywhere. And they're besieging Rivendell with only um, two elites in it. And I use my action token. So that was a slight um, tempo misplay. What I should have done is waited for, for my opponent to move their units from North Dunland into Moria, which felt like the direction they were going. And then at that moment, I could have mustered the elves using the token and been in the same situation, but then their units would have been in, in Moria and they wouldn't have been able to make the attack on Rivendell while also getting the Witch King. So, you know, that was a, that was a misplay on my part. And it sort of, by mustering the elves, it facilitated the Witch King while not actually letting me muster into my strongholds before their armies arrive. Obviously, if I, if I had rolled more musters, that would be a little different, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes. So, and I, and I didn't have to do it that way. I could have just waited. And look, maybe they still would have gone into Holland and besieged, um, and besieged Rivendell without me getting two units in there, but then at least I wouldn't have, they wouldn't have gotten the Witch King and I would have saved my token. So, uh, misplay on my part. Okay, instead I moved the Fellowship now and they hit me. So, you know, not great. I don't wanna keep getting hit. I don't wanna keep getting revealed. Um, that's how it goes. I take one corruption here because I don't wanna risk losing Strider. And if I have some sort of healing effects, you know, Bilbo Song, something like that, if I wanna play it early, then it's not bad to get a little corruption early on. And the sooner I can get out of the range of Morgul Wound, the better, though it doesn't seem like my opponent is particularly worried about corrupting the Fellowship. So they go ahead and move armies as we discussed. And I really want to have power too great. <laughs> this is this would be a perfect moment to have power too great, which would uh, put the elves to war and give me a moment to be able to muster elves in Rivendell before it gets besieged. Um, which, you know, I did try and draw a bunch of strategy cards, but I don't have it. Um, so uh, I go ahead and use that Palantir to hide in Old Forest Road, and then my opponent besieges Rivendell, putting the elves to war, and I play Vile of Galadriel. Vile of Galadriel, obviously, that's a great, great card, super powerful, if you ever make it to Mordor. And and then my opponent gets Witch King. So, you know, um, and then what do I do? Oh, right, I use a ring here to move the Fellowship, because I need to keep the Fellowship moving along, and um, then my opponent misses. So, I think that um, you know, obviously it was bad that my, a uh, bad for my opponent that they had such a bad start with, um, so few musters, but now we're starting turn five. They've managed to besiege two elven strongholds with no resistance, right? No extra musters or anything into them. Even though I had scouts, they were able to nullify that, and they have a giant army sitting right outside of Erebor. So, and now they're rolling nine dice to my four. So, I, I think it's a good, I mean, I think my opponent played really well, 
but I also think it's a good lesson for Shadow to just, you know, stick with it, get your armies moving to the right spots, and then eventually you're going to catch up and get, get some extra dice. Like, eventually you're going to roll some musters and get your minions in. And, um, you know, it would have been good for me to roll a Will of the West that round. Um, you know, I, I didn't get a Will of the West, so I couldn't bring Gandalf back. Um, but it's also a lesson, you know, maybe for... Um, for free people, even if you think that do is going to be safe, it's often a target. And so, you know, not only would it have been nice to get Aragorn, the fact that I could have really defended do quite successfully by getting the dwarves to war turn two without suffering the drawback of the Witch King coming in too early. Um, yeah, I think that was a pretty unfortunate mistake on my part. All right, so I draw power to great right now. Um, you know, it's still okay. Um, I declare the fellowship because there are some cards that Shadow can use if the um, fellowship is step one or higher. Um, so I do that. And then my opponent allocates one eye, rolls two more, and I still don't get a Will of the West. So obviously, you know, this is one of the consequences of not getting Aragorn. If you get Aragorn, it increases your chances of getting Gandalf later. Um, and, you know, I've only rolled one one character movement for the last couple of rounds. Uh, not great. I, um, I play Power to Great here because it'll stall Shadow. Maybe they don't have an army, uh, army card. You have to, uh, to get rid of it, you have to specifically use any one action die discarding one army event. It's not just any strategy card. Um, it can't have it can't have the muster. It has to have an actual army icon on it. So there are you know there are some quite you know I, I don't remember I think it's like half or something like that in the strategy deck for Shadow, but they don't you know you might not always have it. So um, this is a way of sort of stalling stalling Shadow. And um, it works because they run away with the Witch King. That's always satisfying. It'll give me time maybe to draw um, the reinforcement card for Rivendell. That would be nice. But um, this is another thing. This is a drawback of going uh, through High Pass is that the Fellowship's efficient path is completely uh, set. So you have to go, as soon as you go High Pass, you know that it's... Um, high pass goblins get old for old Ford, and then you have a choice. There is one choice between Carrick or um, Rose Gobel, but other than that, after you get past that point, it has to be Old Forest Road, Northern Rovanian, Southern Rovanian, No Man Land, Dagger Lad, Moranon. That's the efficient path, and so Shadow can put Nazgul along that path. And if you go through Moria, then it takes many more Nazgul to to take all the branches away, because you can go multiple different paths to get down there. All right. Um, I'm leaning more and more towards not going, not going to high pass, and just even if you get revealed as Moria, just sort of taking your lumps and giving giving it a shot. Um, okay, so my opponent hits with two hits and then gets an eye. That's two reveal. So I've been revealed and hit quite a lot. Obviously, that's not great for me. And um, I decide to take a random and I get Pippin. And the random I shouldn't have um, I shouldn't have actually removed or revealed yet. The first thing you do is you reveal, uh, you deal with the hunt damage first before you're revealed. And so um, I'm losing a random companion and therefore it's t one movement from Northern Rovanian and because Pippin has one movement, I can actually effectively move them to Erebor. So it's nice to have a companion in Erebor um, that allows, you know, that activates some combat cards and it's an extra leadership and clearly Erebor is going to get attacked at some point. All right, my opponent plays Breaking of the Fellowship here, which, if you look at the hunt pool, um, this is just a beautiful time to play Breaking of the Fellowship. I think my opponent had this card for a while, um, but was reluctant to play it because they didn't want to give me a free separation of Strider um, if I wanted it. And so, um, like, this is just great, because once you lose a single Hobbit, then um, the one cur the one tiles are still one damage, because you'll, you'll choose to separate the Hobbit. But now, all of a sudden, the two tiles are actually three corruption worth of damage, 
because you have to separate a hobbit and then some other companion that's worth two corruption. So effectively, the two tile becomes a three corruption. And if you get the three tile, it's five corruption because you have to, the, the cheapest you can do for the fellowship would be one hobbit and then two level two companions. So if um, the free people player ever happens to take a random companion, which is a hobbit, which is not unlikely because there are two hobbits, then breaking the fellowship suddenly becomes um, just much more pleasant. And to a lesser extent, foul thing from the deep also becomes more pleasant. Um, and then in Foul Thing from the Deep, you're hoping to draw one. In Breaking the Fellowship, you're hoping to draw a three. Uh, but what's crazy is my opponent draws an eye. So, you know, uh, my opponent has actually had some quite bad luck uh, in this game. Th there was, you know, good luck for the hunt rolls. So, uh, you know, that's true. But there's some, like, that is just a crazy, like, this was some of the best setup situation for Breaking the Fellowship I've ever seen. And then they get a side tile, just ludicrous. So, you know, I'm happy to see that. Obviously, good luck for me. And um, I go ahead and hide the fellowship. And then, um, let's see, I guess Woodland Realm is being attacked and uh, Woodland Realm is defeated. Okay, and um, then my opponent besieges Erebor and uh, moves some Nazgul around, reorients onto the fellowship and then I use another ring to move against three eyes with a reroll because I'm just I'm just worried about getting into Mordor. I need to get into Mordor quickly and I have to just risk some corruption on the fellowship. I'm doing okay with number of companions. And I have Bilbo Song and Mithril Coat, so I, I feel okay about all that. Um, you know, I hate using eye, uh, rings before I get into Mordor but I'm just not rolling enough character dice. Let's look at statistics right now real quick. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I'm not that low on, um, on characters. It felt like I was low, but I guess I'm not. I think it's just the nature of going the high pass. You need an extra movement. Um, so, yeah. Okay, uh, I go ahead and move, and then my opponent hits me and draws a three. So, you know, that's how it goes. And then I lose a random companion and that's fine for me. And it wasn't Strider, so that's good. Uh, my opponent powers up Orthanc and we go on. Okay, we prove the Swifter is an interesting idea. And um, let's see, they allocate one eye, roll one more, and I finally get Gandalf, so that's good. And I'm happy to see Gan Gandalf because that will hopefully keep um, keep Orthanc a little more under control. Um, and I feel like I still have some chances of getting into Mortar this round if I use my last ring. So that's, I think that's my thinking. Worn with Sorrow and Toil, obviously quite powerful. And I have Bilbo Song, I have Mithril Coat and Sting. These are just beautiful, beautiful cards that I want to play. Um, but I might not get to play them with Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Yet another reason that if I had separated Aragorn and Gimli or something early on, uh, Worm of Sauron Toil just becomes a less powerful, less powerful weapon against the free people because you um, just have fewer companions. So, okay, I go ahead and move because, oh, and just to clarify, why did I not move right away? If you don't use your Will of the West, you risk Day Without Dawn. And I certainly needed um, to spend that Will of the West because I'm so low on dice. Okay, my opponent hits me. They do not reveal me. And I, it's two damage. I decide, I think, to take a random companion here because while I want to keep Strider, I also want to get to Gollum so I can go faster because the Hunt Pool still has these reveals in it. Um, maybe it's a mistake because I could, you know, hold on to... It's going to trigger Warm with Sauron Toil. Um, because I could hold on to Mithril Coat and Sting, Bilbo Song, very powerful cards. But I think I just think to myself, I gotta, I gotta keep going. Also, Isildur's Bane isn't out yet. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would be better to just take, to take two right here. Um, yeah, maybe that'd be better. But, okay. I decide to take a random and I lose, <coughs> excuse me. I lose Mary, 
And the thing about this is, normally with warm with sorrow and toil, if a hobbit is a guide, you can use their guide ability to separate them from the fellowship, which does not trigger warm with sorrow and toil if you're using the hobbit's guide ability. But if you take the hobbit as a random companion, that does count as a casualty and you do lose a card to warn with sorrow and toil. So this is this is definitely bad luck to for me to lose Mary, but maybe it's good luck for not losing Strider. Um, so I don't know. Is is a little a little strange there. Um, all right, I take one corruption, I lose a card, and what was it? It was Mithril Coat and Sting. That is probably the most powerful corruption reducing card that ha that the free people have, but. Uh, so it goes. Hopefully the Fellowship is still going to have enough corruption uh, to be fine. All right, attacking Erebor and that Hobbit in there. Uh, who is that? Who is that guy? That is uh, Pippin. Way to go, Pippin. Daring defiance against the Witch King, canceling Desperate Battle. Um, but my opponent rolls two sixes anyway. I get two hits and um, they press. And then they get two more sixes, which is good. And I get one hit. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be enough to hold out Erebor. You know, it would have been enough to hold out Erebor if I had gotten them to war on turn two and then had five dice the whole game. All right. Um, can you tell that I regret that? Um, okay, so my opponent attacks Erebor again. They defeat it and I get a few hits back. But now Dew is completely um, controlled. And my opponent is, you know, going to be in pretty good shape here. So um, I'm not exactly sure why I'm passing here. If my opponent has um, a reveal card or anything like that, I don't know. Okay, they get rid of power too great. And then um, I go ahead and use a ring here to move. I'm not sure. Well, I guess I'm like, I shouldn't wait anymore. So I do it. They hit me. They get a two. And... Um, I take another random here. I I think, I don't know why. Um, I guess I'm just worried about going up to six. Six feels a little too high with Isildur's Bane still out. Um, but I also, I want to get to, I want to get to Gollum so I can go faster. Uh, but it does mean that I lose uh, Bilbo's song. So I, Worn with Sorrow and Toil, you know, sometimes can miss with, uh, with the free people, uh, but in that case, I had two really powerful combat cards, and um, uh, sorry, two really powerful uh, character cards, which Warner with Sorrow and Toy got rid of. Also, I will note that um, I would have probably saved um, We Prove the Swifter with Daring Defiance to move Gandalf from Fangorn into Dol Amroth or into Minas Tirith whenever the Witch King shows up. Because probably my opponent is going to try and get a few more victory points. They're going to they're gonna get um, Rivendell. But then they still need three more victory points. And, it, you know, maybe they're going to go for Helm's Deep. That's not unreasonable. But I know I have Aomer. So that's going to make... Um, and I still have, I'm holding the scouts for the Fords of Isen to retreat back into Helm's Deep. So um, I feel like I have decent chances of holding um, Helm's Deep, and so I was I would have saved that we proved the Swifter to bring Gandalf to um, to Dol Amroth, but um, I had to play it because otherwise I lose it to Warm Osar on Toil. Okay, maybe there's some argument for for holding it, and then maybe I would have kept Bilbo's song um, or Mithrakot and Sting, but I guess I'm just thinking ah the Fellowship's going to be okay. I can I can make it. All right, I go ahead and play Aomir now just to get prepared. And uh, my opponent attacks Rivendell and manages to uh, defeat it. Okay. Um, all right, we go to next round. I'm finally at five dice. And I'm happy, you know, I'm, I've been holding Cairdon's ships for a long time. I'm going to be able to reinforce the Lamroth. I feel like Helm's Deep has a decent chance of holding. Um, so we'll see. As long as I can hold out for this round and next round, I should be okay. So I get 
um, some movement here and an eye. You know, I don't love being revealed again, but you know, two damage is okay. And um, the Witch King comes with Ring Wraiths are abroad. And um, the Witch King comes down to Far Harad and then they get to uh, move to Near Harad. And um, let's see, where are they attacking right now? Oh, right. So they're attacking Fords of Eisen. I've been holding the scouts the whole game and they have Swarm of Bats. So again, nice play by my opponent saving the swarm of bats for the right moments to cancel out my scouts and then they managed to get one six uh which is not quite enough um and so i managed to get into helms deep but that's the right i mean that's the right strategy and now they bring everyone in from orthanc which i think is a good choice i didn't roll any palantirs and so if you lose saruman to an ent in exchange for um stopping the fellowship from moving once that's that's a nice trade on top of that i don't actually have any character cards right now so you know that's a thing all right i go ahead and draw a character card now i do have all three ends end cards in there but i don't draw an end card okay um and that again another benefit of warm sorrow and toil so if you can strip the fellowship of or the free peoples of all their character cards then you can um move out of Orthanc with no fear or much less fear of Ents. All right, they're moving armies around and um, Corsairs of Umbar, obviously that's good. And then I play, uh, whoa, they undo. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Um, okay, I play Cairdon ships before they arrive, but then they play, Dol th then they besieged it anyway. I'm not sure exactly what was happening with that ordering there. Um, I muster Rohan and I think my thinking is if this army can attack out of Helm's Deep into this army in Westamnet then they won't be able to take Edoras. Um, so that's why I do the Rohan muster. But of course my opponent properly takes Edoras right here. Uh, they're defending Dale quite vigorously and if they can take Dol Amroth right now then they win the game. So um, I hide with the fellowship and then um, my opponent plays Gron. Obviously that's a great thing to do and you get to uh, do a bunch of damage in Dol Amroth. Um, they, let's see exactly what happens. We have some daylight and then I manage to inflict some damage and then they press and we get down to uh, this situation where they have or they're pressing again and then they roll and then they roll three sixes. So I think their chances of winning that, particularly with Grand, are, are quite good. Um, I don't know exactly what the odds are, but obviously if I had, if I still had had We Proved the Swifter, I definitely would have brought Gandalf down to Dol Amroth and that would have made that battle quite different. So Warren with Sauron Toil did a lot of work that game. Um, and I think that the choice to not bring Strider down to Minas Tirith while also getting the Dwarves to War, while also not even spending any Elven Rings, um, would have made a pretty huge difference in the game. I would have gone slower with the Fellowship. The Fellowship would have had less corruption, um, you know, but then I could have played things like, um, Bilbo's Song before I lost it. Right? I would have had the dice to do that. So, um, you know, I think my opponent played really well with just a horribly unlucky start. And um, this is a good example of Shadow just staying staying persistent and getting their armies in the right places and, and moving efficiently. So, well played. Uh, let's look at the statistics just so you can see where statistics were. Um, so um, remember that these are reversed. There's a bug in a replay. So my opponent was plus five on sixes, obviously good. Um, and Gandalf did take a little while to show up, but I think, you know, I, I think this is not unreasonably uh, lucky combat for my opponent, um, given how unlucky they were with the start. Um, I will also say that uh, we wondered about we wondered about the hunt, 
and um, I put the I use my hunt simulator and let me show let me show that um, maybe I oh, okay here we go okay so this may be a little hard to see but um, this is my hunt simulator, irfa.com slash wotr.php. And basically what you can do is you can put in each of the hunt roles that Shadow actually had um, and whether or not they drew a stronghold tile or um, a card tile or something like that, like Orc Patrol or something like that. I, I counted a stronghold tile from um, Breaking of the Fellowship, which is a stronghold tile basically ignores eyes, but it does inflict damage and it ignores reveals, uh, but it does inflict damage for the corruption. So I felt like breaking the fellowship sort of is represented by a stronghold tile. It's actually a little bit of an underestimate because um, as we saw, breaking the fellowship would have inflicted more damage than actually what was listed on the tile, given that um, a hobbit was already missing, but I included it there just to be more, re more reasonable. So what we would expect given the actual rules that happened in the game for the hunts, we would expect um, 4.7 successful hunts, so about five successful hunts. We would expect about uh, three reveals and about eight corruption inflicted on the way from Rivendell to Mordor. That's what this is. Now, what actually happened in the game was that my opponent got seven hits. And so you can look at the number of successful hunts the chances they would get seven successful hunts, 97%. You know, this is meaning this is 97th percentile, 3% chance that would happen. Most times, if these are actually the dice that you roll when, when hunting the fellowship, you're not gonna get seven hits. So this is certainly, you know, above average. Um, in terms of reveals, they actually got four reveals, um, which does not happen very often. And um, they, got, uh, oh, sorry, I, I'm sorry, I misspoke, this is wrong. I said 3%, it's actually 9%. So the, the next the next one up would be 3%, but this one, so it was 9%, um, and really you have to add up all of these to be fair, so it was uh, really 12% uh, to get seven reveals or more is what was what this is telling us. Um, and then in this situation, this is four reveals is 24% or more. That's adding up all of these numbers down here. And corruption was 11 is what they actually inflicted, um, which is 23% chance. So again, they were above the bell curve on reveals and hunts and corruption, which obviously are all correlated, but um, their start was horribly unlucky. So you know, for people who say War of the Ring has a lot of luck in it, yes, there's randomness, but there's a lot of randomness in a lot of things. And overall, often things balance out. So yeah, my opponent got unlucky with the, with the musters, but they got a bit lucky with the, um, with the hunt. And that slowed down the fellowship enough to give them enough time to get their 10 victory points. So this was a great game. Uh, my opponent played really well, and uh, we went one-on-one -on -one in the league, and um, if you are still interested in joining the league, it's open. Anybody can join. It's, you know, just friendly games. You, you play people at your tier, and, um, and then at the end of the year, it lasts all of 2022. At the end of the year, um, whoever, there's a group of us, whoever has, you know, the high, higher scores, uh, you get to play in a you know playoff tournament to determine league champion, but it's just like slightly more exciting than uh, rated games. Um, so that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you um, are still here, thanks for watching, and um, I look forward to playing with a lot of you during the 2022 tournament. Have a good rest of the day.